We've listed out a few examples of some peripheral devices here, such as printers, modems, network cards, and the list can go on and on. But the key thing to remember, again, is that peripherals are going to be non-essential devices. Even though it would be pretty handy to have a video card or a keyboard, they're not always going to be considered peripheral or non-peripheral devices. Now, anytime you're configuring a peripheral device, you've got to be familiar with the concept of your interrupts, your I.O. ports, and the available memory addresses. Now, generally, we leave this configuration up to the operating system. But if you're familiar enough with these configurations and the various options, then it might be an idea for you to actually go in and make some configuration changes. Now, devices that actually use interrupts use those interrupts to request processor time. And basically, there are a total of 16 interrupts, 0 through 15. And the ranking, with 0 the highest and 15 the lowest, lets the CPU know which device to give attention to at any given time. If you assign multiple or duplicate interrupts, to two different devices. The CPU is not going to know which device to give attention to. A common example of this is using a serial mouse configured on interrupt 3. Well, if you also have a serial modem configured on interrupt 3, then when you use your mouse to access the internet, either your mouse or your modem is going to stop working because your CPU doesn't know which device to give higher priority to. So it's always pretty handy to make sure that your interrupts are configured properly. Again, generally we're going to leave this up to the operating system. Now you've probably heard the common term ports. As a matter of fact, I use the term ports even when dealing with Linux, simply because it's a universally understood term. But technically, there's no such thing as ports in the Linux operating system. Instead, we generally have files that are used to represent functionality of peripheral devices. In the example that we have here, we have COM port 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are generally reserved for serial ports 1 and 2 in a Windows environment. So instead, we actually have TTY, or Terminal 0, Terminal 1, Terminal 2, and Terminal 3 that are representing their respective COM ports. So instead, when we would normally configure an application to use COM1 or configure to use this serial device, we would configure it using the path as shown here. Now, LPT ports or local printer ports are configured much in the same way. Instead of having an LPT1 or an LPT2, we actually have a dev LP0. Always remember that in a Linux environment, and most of the time in a Windows environment, your device counts start with zero.